welcome to 032 Conversations, the podcast where we talk to creatives, see how they live, and how they do their work. I'm your host, Carlo Villarica. I'm I'm recording today. It's a bright Monday morning. It's sunny outside. It's a beautiful day. And I'm recovering from a sick weekend. I was literally sick the whole Sunday. Yeah, it sucks. It sucks getting sick. I missed my weekend bike ride. I barely made it out of the house for Sunday mass and our uh, family lunch. I mean, during family lunch, I mean, I, I barely ate anything. And then I slept through most of it. And I missed out on my friend's kid's birthday party. Yeah, being sick, it's no good. It sucks. When I'm sick, when I'm sick, it it, it feels like I can't do anything. Like my body just shuts down and I just don't want to move. And then I keep thinking about, for some reason when I'm sick, I think about like, that's the state of my body forever. You know, like it it comes to my head that maybe this is what it's going to be like forever. And then I just forget. I got I catch myself sometimes when I'm sick because I forget how much energy I usually have during the day. And it and it and then I miss it. Honestly, I end up missing how much energy I have, you know, waking up early, hanging out with the kids, going out on a bike ride, doing work. I'm going to be honest with you. I like what I do every day. And when I'm sick, it just sucks. Like I just spent the whole Sunday sleeping after I got after we got back from family lunch. I just stayed in bed and I couldn't get up. I think I spent more out of the 24 hour Sunday. I think I spent more than 12 hours in bed. I suspect. I'm not sure, but I, I, well, I, well, asleep. I spent more than 12 hours asleep. Which, you know, honestly, I like being awake, man. I like doing stuff. I like getting out there, conquering the world. <laughs> like right now, it's Monday morning. Uh, I don't feel 100%, but I feel much better. It's a reminder, man. It's a reminder to be thankful when you're like uh, not sick, when you're feeling good and strong, when you have all that energy in the world. Uh, you gotta take advantage of those days. There's so many good coffee shops in Cebu these days, and one of them is the Green Nine Coffee. I am really thankful that you can get good coffee in Cebu now. When you drop by the Green Nine Coffee in the Gagfa Tower, F. Kabaog Street, Mabolo, Cebu City, you can expect good coffee. And this is the nice thing about the Green Nine. If you're intimidated by like the specialty coffee and you want to hang out with your friends who want specialty coffee and maybe you just want to frap or maybe you have a friend who wants a frap and you want specialty coffee, head on over to the Green Nine. They'll serve you both. There's... No shame in ordering a sugar-filled frap, and uh, the Green Nine coffee will serve you both. You want a nice little filtered coffee from the Green Nine? Then no problem, you'll get it. So again, visit the Green Nine coffee in the Gagfa Tower, F. Kabaog Street, Mabolo, Cebu City. That's near Sykes, folks. Good coffee. My guest today. Is an old friend, his name, he's not old, he's about the same age as me. Now, my guest today is an old friend, Edgar Alan Zeta Yap. He's a travel writer, photographer, and blogger from the Philippines. Get this, he has traveled to all 81 provinces in the Philippines, from Batanes to Tawi-Tawi, and all 11 nations in Southeast Asia, including Myanmar and Timor-Leste, or... East Timor. I guess it's called East Timor. Yeah. yeah. We were classmates for a while in high school before he transferred to Science High. But also, when we first started 032, the blog 032.com, 
he he was one of the only people that I knew who was doing the online thing, who had a blog, who was uh, writing articles about travel, putting it online, and then eventually he started getting he started getting these jobs on uh, those in-flight magazines and writing for them. So we talk about that and how he got started there. But back then, when we started zero three two, there were not a there were not a lot of people doing that. That was 2011, I believe. And I think he started in 2008. Let me double check that. Yeah, so he started in 2008. Well, back then, when we started 032, I wanted to get into that well of experience that he had. So he was one of the first people who looked at the site and told us where and what we could improve on. And, uh, you know, with his help, with his input, we have been we are what we are today. <laughs> But yeah, so it was good to have him. In fact, I was uh, I was surprised that when I sent him a message, I didn't expect him to be in the Philippines or in Cebu, which we talked about also in the podcast. But I, I suspected that we'd have to like schedule for a time when he'd be here. But I got really lucky. It turns out that uh, November December he was going to be in Cebu, and uh, we were able to do the podcast. We talk a lot about his experience and uh, traveling and all the places he's been and uh, all the fun stuff that he went through, like eating rats, fried tarantulas, going to, I believe it was Sulu, and then apparently you need to have escorted guards there. So we talked about that experience, talked about being hours and hours on a banka. It's fun. Give it a listen. And if you haven't yet, if this is your first time to listen to 032 Conversations, please subscribe to the podcast. You can press subscribe on a podcast app or go to Spotify and subscribe. If you're listening to this from the website, from the 032.com web player, the best way to listen to podcasts is to download a podcast app on your phone. And if you've already subscribed... And you want to hear more from me, I publish a newsletter every Monday. It's called Monday Musings. It's a set of recommends and thoughts I thought were shared. I think I got to change the sentence. Monday Musings is a set of recommends and links and stuff that I found cool on the internet that I thought were worth sharing that week. It is sent out via email every Monday to our faithful newsletter subscribers. So you can head over to 032.com slash Monday to get a sense of what that newsletter is like. Let's get to the interview with Edgar Alanzeta. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, no, you can, you can talk about whatever. So when you're writing, here, you get the uh, microphone. No, I'm very, I'm very, um, our, our operation like here is uh, very low budget it, and it honestly sucks. It feels so. like I'm hosting uh, wedding or something like yes that's what uh, that's what all my guests feel like <laughs> <laughs> no so when you write an article yeah i write an article and of course i write an art uh, my articles on my laptop on my mac and i have i have the social media on like i have the window the safari on and it's on facebook and it's on twitter or whatever and you know sometimes it can be a distraction but at the same time you also want to be connected so it's always this struggle of mine to you know, find to strike that ba- balance of being connected and at the same time, you know, not too distracted. You know what I used to do when, so before we started the podcast, so I did a lot of writing. In the end, mm. I wrote a lot of the blog posts on 032. And I would wake up early, like six or something. And then before I get to anything else, you know, my mind is still. This was my routine. This was my like writing routine. Yeah, yeah. Where my mind was still fresh and not thinking about anything, not okay. frazzled, and then no one was, no one else was really awake. You okay. Know what I'm saying? So there's no distractions. I have two kids. Yeah, yeah. So it's a bit difficult. So what time? What what around what time do you? I get uh, up at like six or something. Oh, you write in the morning. I like I like writing like really really late, like mm. like around up to like. 3 a.m. or something. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. So that's also like a time when 
And it's so quiet. Nothing's happening. Nothing's yeah. happening. And <laughs> the internet is faster. Oh, yeah. Less people are using the, the that internet. That might be a bad thing because the internet's faster. So all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah. you can, like, yeah. you, can, you can do stuff. So the internet is more reliable <laughs> during the wee, the wee morning hour, hours. Well, wait, let me... Because I have notes. Uh, mm. we're, uh, but you, I, I may but not you, have But you mind. wanted it to be like a surprise, right? You didn't You didn't want to give me any guide questions and stuff. No, I mean, if you wanted... I, you <laughs> notice I sent you those... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. If you wanted, but the, it was just like a rough, like... Yeah, there's yeah. no... This isn't a gotcha show. <laughs> I'm not going to uh, ask you to reveal anything you don't want to reveal. <laughs> okay. First of all, it's good to see you, mate. Yeah, it's been ages. <laughs> I know, okay. Yeah, um... So what we usually do is... Uh, you know, we might, I don't have a mic stand. We're not that uh, pro. Maybe down do the line. Notes. Maybe when you get more sponsors, you know, and yeah, we'll more advertising... Happens. More, more, you know, audiences. Uh, maybe I'll hopefully. move into a room that's actually quiet instead of this like really noisy aircon that I'm gonna have to uh, take away and post. Oh, the, the, does it pick up the? Oh yeah, AC? it'll pick it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. No, okay. but it's uh, no, it's uh, don't sh- worry about it. Sh- it should be fluffy, right? Those fluffy mics. Well, like, again, yeah, I have to buy that. Part. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a sound engineer. I just know those fluffy mics like help with the wind and the. Ah no, no is the, it the wind? The is sound it... that's gonna come off is you hear the the hum. Mm. But you can. You can remove it. In I can post? remove that in post. Oh. Yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, it's you know. Now I'm interviewing you. The yeah, tables have uh, the. Tables have been turned. <laughs> so wait, so just to start, no, I'll need. Can you state your name and what you do? I'm Edgar Allen Zatayap. I'm a travel writer and photographer, and at the same time, I've been blogging on my travel blog, EasyTraveler.net. Okay, and then usually, yep. I know we just jumped into it, and then usually <laughs> for levels, that's why you see me like stare at the at this device because I need to make sure that. It's recording you. No? Okay. So for levels, I usually ask, so what did you have for breakfast? What did I have? I wake, I woke up pretty late. So I had like a brunch right away. We had, we had, I had lunch with my family, my mom and my dad. Yeah. Where'd you guys go? Uh, no, no. I mean, just at home. Oh, at home. Yeah. We were so excited to try out because I brought these, like, we've been growing this, like, new variety of Ampalaya. Okay. This bitter gourd. And they're like much smaller, but they're yellow in color. It was really cool. So it was our first time to actually eat it. So we were excited. Really? Where'd you to get have it that? for brunch? I had it when I visited, uh, I tried that weird ampalaya when I visited Nanjing in China two months ago. So it's really weird. It's like a, for them, that, it's not a vegetable. It's more like a fruit because it's yellow and it has, it's red inside. And they, it's sold on the sidewalk and people eat it as a fruit. Like, they throw away actually the, the, they just eat the pulp inside. And it's sweet. The reddish, would you say the inner part's red? Yeah, the the pulp surrounding the seeds is Ah. what you eat and it's sweet. And it's like a fruit more than a vegetable actually. But, yeah, yeah, but the flesh, the yellow, the, the yellow, you know, fruit itself is a bit, um, bitter, but not as bitter as the ones we have here. Uh, then, it's pretty interesting. And we were surprised that it actually started to sprout and actually bear fruit in just like two months. So you brought it in from China. I smuggled it from China. Oh, yeah. sorry. You smuggled it? No, no, no. no. <laughs> just the seeds. Just the seeds. Yeah, yeah. And then you, you guys planted it in your backyard or something? Yeah, because I posted it. And then, and then no, I, I posted a photo of it on social media. That I, was, I, was, I was having it in China. And then my, my parents said, bring, try bringing some, in some seeds. So I, I, I brought the seeds. And it grew. And it grew in our garden. And yeah, let me run. <laughs> yeah, let me. And it tasted exactly like the ones. It was. They were much smaller than the the fruits I had in uh, China, but they actually grew. So it's food interesting. Like, difficult when you travel, right? Like I know, like you know, in a way that not difficult in a sense. Like, you know, obviously, sometimes when you travel, you get to try all of these different, yeah, uh, like restaurants or a special this or special that. But I'm sure there are times when, like, you've gone all over, and then there are some places that are, like, super remote. And uh, this food, like, uh, is it difficult I, sometimes to, like, you know? 
I don't know. For me, no, because I'm not really that picky when it comes to food, and I'm pretty much I'm pretty adventurous when it comes to food as well. Like I've tried deep fried tarantulas and really grilled rat in Cambodia. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> grilled rat? Yeah, there were uh, we were visiting a uh, a village. I remember we went to this small village in Cambodia, and we saw uh, a lady. On a bike, and she was selling something on on her bike, and we went uh-huh. we went over to her, to, to, you know, to take a look, and we saw that we're, she was selling something like grilled something, and we, we actually thought it was like some grilled bird, like uh, we knew it wasn't a chicken, but it had a different shape, so we just thought there was like a different, I don't know, like some wild game or something. But when we we need to when we took a closer look, like it had incisors, and you know, it it and was it was a rat and. It, <laughs> No, the tail is like. Oh, they cut, cut it off. Yeah, they cut it off. So it was right, and my friends like dared me to, you know, yeah, yeah, I'll eat that. I'll eat one if you, you know, if you share it with me. So we had we shared one stick. We we shared one rat with grilled rat, and it actually tasted. You know how they always say that weird. You know how it they always say it tastes like chicken. Most of the weird things t- actually taste like chicken. Really, like frog and and rat. Is that the weirdest thing you've ever tasted? Like, the I think, rat? I think deep fried tarantulas are weirder than You think rats. so? I feel like the what? rat would oh, be. Oh, the rats, they're not the rats that are like in this. It's in the, they, they're from the rice fields. Ah, so they're they're right. Like, not rat, you know, you won't eat like sewer rats. Ah, and, like cleaner in the rats. city. Yeah, they're in the, in the, in the countryside, country rats. Oh, so the deep fried tarantula also tastes like chicken or? No, the, Deep fried tarantula. Oh, that was really nice. Um, we we ate it in a restaurant in Phnom Penh, in the capital of uh, Cambodia, and it was a really nice restaurant because it was like some sort of like NGO, like a social. I forget the name, and the 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 waiters and the and the cooks are like these are like homeless people that they take in and they train and they serve like Cambodian food, prepares Cambodian food. And one of their specialties, like one of the yeah, one of the reasons people go there is for the deep fried tarantula with a lemon pepper sauce. And yeah, when you when you think about it, it's kind of gross because you, you'd think that the thick parts of the tarantula would be like chewy and gooey and no, but it was all crispy. It was really, oh, really? nice. Yeah, yeah, it was really nice, and it tasted exactly like the crispy edges of uh, chicharron bulaklak. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That sounds really good. Yeah, it's it's really good, and I enjoyed the tarantula more than the rats. Yeah, was it like a sauce? The rat was very like mm, uh, oily. I, I think it was just like the sauce that they. I don't know. It was just oil. It's kind of like greasy, oily. I, I I just had to drink a lot of soda with it, or or beer. Was it beer? I think we had beer with the rat. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> it's kind of weird, like how you, how you can just say it casually. Yeah, we had beer with a rat. No, I mean I feel like that's the cool thing with you, by like but, yeah. not many people. Uh, you know, so I was uh, I was reading your your blog, and then I realized, Kato, you've been you've been you've been a travel blogger for what, like ten years now. Yeah, yeah. Um, celebrating my this is my tenth year. Yeah, this is so, your tenth yeah, year. Yeah, so I started way back in two thousand eight. Yeah, and um, you know, it's that's that's really early. Also, two thousand. I felt like it was really early. Because I remember, I remember. Now the audience should know we kind of go way back. Like I've known you since grade school. Right? Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. Uh, and then I rem- and uh, I remember when we started zero three two. I remember showing it to you, pa. What year is this? Uh, 2011. Like, like I, I... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a... Yeah. I don't know if you remember, but I remember showing it to you and then just asking for like... Tips, tips and stuff. Like how to write, that sort of thing. Yeah. And then back then, you're probably the only person I knew who... who did this. I mean, who... who, who not only like they yeah. put their... they had a blog, uh, who traveled uh, all the time. Yeah. And then you were basically, I don't know if you were location independent at that point. Uh, when I started out, not really. Like, I was like really based in Manila because when I started my blog, I was still working in an advertising agency. Mm-hmm. So there was an overlap, like, because I left the advertising agency in 2012. Yeah. So between 2000, 
eight and two thousand twelve. I was I was I had a nine to five job at the same time. I was like working on my blog and also on the side. Like I I also started writing for for magazines. Well, like, so how yeah, did yeah. that? How did that? I'm not. I'm not. Like I know what happened in a sense that okay, this is what you do. But yeah. how did that happen? That how did that start? Like what made you? Want to become a travel blogger, uh, and then at because so you started in two thousand eight, mm. mm. and then eventually at some point in two thousand eleven, twelve, you had you were able to quit your job, right? Yeah, I quit my job because I was in the agency for in the same in the same advertising agency for seven years. Like as a you know, I started out in in creatives. I was like a graphic designer and. Uh, copywriter, creative developer, then I became a strategic planner. And I eventually like decided to quit and focus on like writing full time. But it, it didn't it I mean writing and shooting for magazines was also something that I was doing on the side, you know, while while I was in the agency. Like it wasn't like a sudden shift. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But what made you want to do I mean uh you know what made you do like uh, how, did you, how did you get from from having that nine to five and then to to now like what made well you at want first to do I just wanted to take a break and then when I and then you know like work started to come in projects started to come in like assignments for the travel and the, I, I figured out like hey this could work like I can support myself like with uh you know it's it's enough like I'm earning as much as I was with a advertising job and I wasn't cooped up in a, in a, in an office like the whole day. Mm. So, and I, I very, I like, I like being in the field. Like I, you know, I, I can survive being in an office, but I like being outside talking to people. And that's why I even shifted from being a graphic designer to a strat planner because being a graphic designer was involved, you know, required us to be just in front of our computers designing the entire day but a strat planner, like, we had to talk to the clients. We had to brief the creatives. And it was pretty cool because I was talking to so many types of people. Like, I, a, a strat planner is like the, the bridge. Uh-huh. Like, we link what the client wants and how. And we have to interpret, interpret that to the, you know, to the creative team to produce, you know, advertising material, mark, mar, uh, market, marketing collateral. So I like that job because I was involved in meetings outside outside the 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 office so that's pretty much that's how i i want my 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 work to be like not just be office based all the time Mm -hmm. so and i loved i loved you know travel so i mean traveling was always something that i love to do and and writing as well so it just simply like just came together eventually but how because uh there's a lot of people who you know who can write who can do photography but it's it doesn't uh the return to them is not the same how are you how are you able to like financially so at some point you mentioned that you were able you started earning b- as much as yeah much as, as much i job. was lucky because i was working for these magazines that were based in singapore uh uh mostly for it's an it's a company called ink and they specialize this is a company that specializes in in flight magazines uh, mm. Publishing in-flight magazines for you know all these uh, airline companies all over the world, including Cebu Pacific. And right now they also do uh, PAL as well. But I'm I'm I write more for uh, Cebu Pacific for uh-huh. Smile Smile magazine. So and and they pay in in Singaporean dollars. So you know maybe when it's when if you earn it there in Singapore and you have all these high costs of living, that wouldn't suffice. But since I, I, you know, I, I work remotely and I work in the Philippines, and when Singaporean dollars get converted, to it's, peso, it's much it's, higher. It's yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. So I, I survive with that. Yeah. No. Yeah. I make do with that. So I, I was in Singapore a few, like a few months ago, <laughs> and I didn't realize how expensive it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. Yeah, Singapore. I'm always there, even even way before. I think that's the country I've been to most. Really? Yeah, after the Philippines. Because even when I was in the advertising uh, agency, I was going there for like regional meetings. Mm. Mm, and I have a lot of friends there. 
as well who moved there, worked there. Singapore is interesting, actually. Yeah, I like I like Singapore. It's like a. I think it's a it's a, it's a good place for first like for first timers in Asia. Like it has a, like a little bit of you get a taste of like different cultures, like a Malay and the Indian and I the always, Chinese. I always feel like Singapore is really safe. Like too <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah, you get like, what I'm saying. It's like yeah. it's too it's too sanitized. For yeah, like, it is. So that's why I think it's a good introduction. I'm uh-huh. not saying that that should be your entire Asian experience, but it's a good introduction yeah, to Southeast Asia. A, yeah, yeah. So you're, if you're a Westerner yeah, yeah. and then yeah. you're used to things, but the food, so- I, I love the food in Singapore. Oh yeah, yeah the hawker that's true. and and I, I actually like Singapore more than Hong Kong in terms of food. In terms of food, in terms of the locals, I oh, okay. I think yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, but topography wise, I love Hong Kong. But it's more mountainous because Singapore is just like all flat, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, like there's more hiking because I like hiking. I like the outdoors. So. Yeah, Mark, in Hong Kong, there's a place like it's. It, you think of Hong Kong as this big city, right? Yeah. And then, but apparently, there's this. I'm not. I'm not familiar at all. I just know that there's this area where it's. It's very naturey. Nature. Yeah, yeah, Saikong. It's like a, an entire peninsula with, with small bays and Lantau Island also where the airport is is pretty much undeveloped and it has like a lot of reservoirs and forest reserves. I was in Hong Kong like uh, last month and yeah, my friend, my local friend showed me around Saikong Peninsula which is this area that's very green. We went to uh we went to a really deserted beach, like waterfalls. There's a, yeah, there were like jung- waterfalls in the middle of the jungle in Hong Kong. Well, so like, that was interesting, yeah. It's not something. Like, yeah, it's unexpected. But there's also a lot of like green, like nature. Surprisingly, there are a lot of green nature places in Singapore. Like I, I love, yeah. With, with, and you'll be surprised, like you're hiking there and you see signs like, beware of wild boar. And so there are in like, Singapore? there are wild pigs in Singapore. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't believe it. I went, I went, I haven't seen one, but you know, when you search online, there are like photos of them, like crossing streets and stuff like that. No, yeah. So, so like, I think the nice thing with you is that since you're out there so often and then like me, I, you know, I, I get to travel a little bit, but yeah. I see what everyone else gets to see more or less, mm. you know, like mm. the usual. Spots. Well, I, well, the last when I was in Singapore, actually, I really liked it. I was really just there to babysit my niece. Yeah. And then, were you there with family or? Because no, it's. A, I think Singapore. There. My, my sister ah, lives there. But Singapore is a really nice like place for for family, like to visit with like a fa- family uh, trip. Yeah. No, I was just there by myself. Oh, okay. And then my since my sister lives there, and then. Um, she has a kid, and then she had like a Jap- Japan work trip or something. Okay. And then her mm-hmm. her kid was like, they were new pa there in Singapore, maybe like a month or two. And she just didn't want to leave her alone. Okay. So I was there. I was basically babysitting her. Yeah. And then over the weekend, we just rented those bikes, those OFO bikes. Oh, you know, yeah, you can yeah. just like unlock through your phone. Th- through the app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Through the app. I, I and had then, tried uh, that in, in Malaysia. Yeah, we just yeah. biked um, all over ah, Singapore. Where at? Like which part of Singapore? Like East Coast Park was it? Okay, I I don't know the names of the places. I <laughs> was just it along the along the beach. Well, no, we like biked along... to. Okay, we biked to this. So I like coffee, so we biked to Pakamara. I think it's called Pakamara Coffee Shop, and then okay. there's this. Uh, it's apparently where Singapore gets their water. This big oh, like a reservoir, Macritchie. Yeah, this... Is it Macritchie? Macritchie. Yeah, yeah, that one. We went there. Yeah, that was yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the next day, or the, we we biked to. Uh, Common Man Coffee. Okay. I don't know the name of the area. <laughs> it seemed fancy. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, but it was cool. We just biked through uh, yeah, it's Singapore. Nice. And then yeah. at least it's a different experience. But, yeah. You know? and, uh, but you must have something like that. You must go through something like that all the time. What do you mean? In, I, I don't know. When you go to places, <laughs> but like, you know, like, kind of like you were hiking around Hong Kong. I don't know anybody who's hiked around Hong Kong. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a lot of people do. Most people go there for the shopping and the city, yeah, All cityscape, yeah. But I always like trying because as a writer for magazines and and my and my blog, but most especially for magazines, you're always constantly looking for 
new angles to a place. So you can't just write about what everybody is writing about. Has you to have to different. you have to look for a fresh angle. So if everybody's talking about shopping and whatever in Hong Kong, you know, you try to give it a f- fresh spin by maybe you know looking at the nature side of Hong Kong. That would be interesting. So, but yeah, I haven't I haven't I haven't written about Hong Kong in quite a while. The last the last article I, I wrote about was like free places to enjoy art in Hong Kong. So I am. Oh, yeah, what are the free places to enjoy? Do you still remember? I'm just curious. Oh my god, I wrote that article in like almost ten years ago. Oh really? Wow. Uh, there was like, car- there were like sculptures in Kowloon Park. There were like galleries in Soho and on Hong Kong Island that you can just visit for free. Um, you can watch like Cantonese opera for free if you're a tourist at a certain Cantonese opera hall, and it had like free shows at cer- on certain times. No. So that's what I could remember. But I noticed on your blog, ba, it's, I uh oh, it's okay. because I like we started 2011, <clears> and then yeah, you came in. I'm not sure if we started recording when you when we talked about it, but you asked how long I've been doing the podcast, no? Yeah. And then we started this year Feb, and one of the reasons why we did that for me was that a lot of the we would post. In 2011, we'd post an article, we'd post something, and then you'd see right away a reaction, engagement, that sort of thing. And over the years, with Facebook, Instagram becoming more popular, it just started, the attention started going there more. <laughs> Did you, do you... Like, the attention started going more to the Facebook? Yeah, to Instagram. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. for example, what we were doing, we were... Yeah, I understand about, what you mean. Like, yeah. there was more interaction... Before, I think it's because, I don't know, like, what is the app that you'd open, like, when you open your phone, turn on your phone, your computer, like, automatically you go to Facebook. That's like your, that's like your home base and mm-hmm. the, and the web. So I guess that's why, and, and Facebook is doing all that they could, all that they can to make people, you know, stay on the platform, yeah. with, you know, with how they're designing the experience. So, yeah, I guess that's, that's it. And all, all we could do as bloggers is, is, is utilize that. Utilize Instagram and Facebook as a jumping, a j- uh, jump off point into your blogs. Uh, because I noticed, <laughs> uh, I noticed like on Instagram. Yeah. That's, that, you've been putting a lot of like, uh, is it fair to say that, you know, it's more your Instagram or your Facebook is more, um, updated than the blog? Uh oh yes, definitely because like it it requires less time to put up an Instagram post or a Facebook post rather than like a, a blog because with with a narrative, so because creating a blog, writing a blog, you know, um, entails more time. And yeah, have so you... definitely like my my Instagram is more updated. Like if you want to know what I'm doing or where where I am, like the most recent places I visited, like you have to visit my. My Instagram, mm. yeah, yeah. Have you so you've so have you noticed like a a change in how people interact with your content in that sense? Um, yeah. There's like I noticed there like less like yeah. I, I don't know. I think it's probably also the algorithm of of Facebook and Instagram. Like it's harder to even get your content there exposed to your followers if you don't pay for oh, yeah. you know for for it to be sponsored and be seen by more people so that's a challenge for me i think there's there's less and less interaction with content and there's you have more and more quote unquote like competition to deal with like there's more people content creators now online because it's much easier yeah because in 2000 when you when you started <laughs> in, yeah uh, yeah even when he, yeah. even when we started, like there was hardly anybody yeah, yeah. putting up good stuff online, and then now there's so much good stuff. Like uh, if you if you want to find, uh, let's say something about Cebu, for example, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. so many people doing it yeah, way yeah. better than how we were doing it back yeah. in the day, no. And then, yeah, I, I just I just I was just I just thought of uh, bringing that up because you might have like a. It, because the perspective of having started like from two thousand eight and how things have changed, no? 
mm. from since then mm. compared to now ba it's interesting because i know i mean even you you haven't um you've also evolved in a sense no mm. i'm sure like you you're putting more content on social media yeah 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 definitely no yeah and, and then, actually like there's more engagement when i post something actually on my personal facebook rather than my you know my my fan page and on in facebook so I just like just post on both. So ah, oh, you post on on both. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. In a way, what I do, <laughs> what I do, what I do whenever I post like a podcast. So I post it on the page, yeah. and then I just share it on my personal account. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. That's what I do as well. Oh, and my Instagram is linked to my. Well, it used to be linked to my personal page, but now it's linked to my official Facebook page. Mm. Yeah. So when you when you post, it'll share. I will just go there because sometimes I forget to update my personal Facebook page. So at least whenever I post some in- content on Instagram, it comes out there. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Like the problem I feel with like with with just relying on Facebook, Instagram is you don't get a deeper context of of the content. Like I was looking at your um your blog and then. There's a blog post that I that I looked at. It's kind of the, my ten best adventures in the Philippines over the past. 10 oh yeah, years. yeah, this yeah. This is like the one that sort of announced, eh, not announced, but your it was like your celebration post. Of your yeah, yeah, years, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. And then I thought, I mean, I found uh, and that then it was like in partnership with <laughs> Super Pacific. Oh yeah, 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 that, yeah. That specific post. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, because yeah, I noticed you mentioned them in the beginning. Yeah, because um, they sponsored the prizes. Like I gave away like a trip to to Coron oh, okay. earlier this year, last March. Mm. So they took care of the flights. So in exchange, I did a sponsored post. That was interesting. I, oh, I like. Well, yeah, I like, I, the nice thing with that was that it was a sponsored post. But like I found it, it's yeah. interesting. It's like a real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's like a, it's a it's well that's what a sponsored post is supposed to be. It's supposed yeah, yeah, to. Yeah. Have some sort of real content. In yeah, there. yeah, yeah. And what I like, so your best ten adventures, right? And yeah. then you mentioned like Sulu. Yeah, so yeah. Can you can you uh, can you talk about that a little bit? Like I googled it, and it's like in the southwestern. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, Mindanao. It, yeah, it's also one of the uh, riskier, risky places to visit. I mean, I I think that's the riskiest place I visited. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sulu, hello. What's this? What's it I was. It's the... not pronounced Sulu. It's I don't know. Holo is Holo? the Holo oh. is the a J O L O is the um, provincial capital oh, of okay. Sulu province. Y- yeah, but you Sulu were... is like a cluster of islands. Like you were escorted by PNP, <laughs> but or Marines. Marines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you? I. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was there because I always because I wanted to visit the all the provinces in the Philippines. So yeah, and. I remember that time, um, I was an ambassador for Philippine Airlines. So they're giving me free flights every month. So, and PAL flights from Zamboanga to Holo. So I said, you know, finally, I, I should definitely go to Sulu. But of course, you can't just go there because I wanted to, it's possible. I mean, there are bloggers and who've been there without any escort and stuff but i had to take i wanted to take lots of pictures and you can't just go there and like i would it would be so obvious that i wasn't just a tourist like maybe people might think like i was media or something and i might be a target for kidnapping or you know something like that they might think just because i'm taking so many pictures so i had to coordinate with you know and i, and I also you know it's also part of your responsibility responsibility when visiting a risky place you don't want to be another you know liability to to the lgu you know add on to the list <laughs> or the news so i had to coordinate with um with the tourism office and then they forwarded you know they they said yeah we can we can provide security you know through with the marines with the with the with the sol- local uh, military so that's how you were able to get the the marines <laughs> to go around with you yeah but it, uh, they were also going around with me but it, it was like a vacation for them as well because they were also like taking selfies and 
you know, like they were enjoying. They the... were like your travel companions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They just <laughs> happened to be highly trained professionals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the moment we touched down, like a military truck fetched us from the airport. But it wasn't weird because there were many people who had military escorts. So you weren't alone. So everyone, really? Yeah, there were many people who were fetched by military uh, <laughs> personnel. So wait, did you have to pay them? Did you have to pay them? No, 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 no. It like was part of their, their... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, like the safest accommodations are located within military camps in Sulu. And they're really nice because these camps are located at elevated areas because they, they need to have a good vantage point, right? So it was always like overlooking the city, overlooking the countryside. So it was like a scenic. It was always scenic where the military camps were. So I had to, I, I slept at the military, uh, camps. Like, I think I was like in Sulu for like five days or like a week. Ah, yeah. uh, like, uh, okay, like and, a week. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I, I, I did that. So I, so I also blogged about my experience and it was like in cooperation, like co- it's like a sponsored post with, uh, Philippine Airlines since they sponsored my flights. And I also pitched that and I was really, Surprised that uh, a local Philippine magazine was interested to run a travel piece on Sulu. Really? Yeah, Travel Now magazine. So I was like really excited, like, well, oh, cool, I'll be able to write about my experience there as a as a tourist. And it's also nice to shed light on on these places. Like we always just hear like a lot of you know neg- neg- negative news, but these places are like really beautiful. Like the islands in Sulu are like some of the most beautiful I've seen in the Philippines. They're like they look like, they look like, I haven't been to Ma- Maldives, but they look like the islands in Maldives. They're, they're like atolls. You know, like they're, they're like newly formed islands where it's like water in the middle. Oh, okay. And like a ring of sand. That's how the islands there look like. Really? Yeah. So wait. Okay, wait. <clears throat> I want to step back a little bit. Yeah, because I'm rambling like no, in different so when directions. You went, when, you went to Su- when you went to Sulu. Yeah. How did you even know? Did you go there? Did you have a plan? Okay, I'm going to see this, 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 and this. I had, yeah, because there are like, there are bloggers who've been there bef- way before me. Ah, and, okay. and there's like content online. And you can see, I mean, with the magic of social media, you, you see even locals posting content. So you know the places to go to. So what was interesting when you went there? I mean, aside from the whole environment being... the Having the beach all to yourself, snorkeling spots... The culture of the Tausog is very similar to the culture in Indonesia and uh, Indonesia and Malaysia. I got to see like a lot of the Tausog crafts. We went to villages where they do like weaving, beautiful like intricate weaving. At the same time, um, where they make um, the kris, the, the the sword, sword, swordsmiths. Sword, oh, really? Yeah, sword making. Did you see? In, did you see them make like, yeah, real swords? Yeah, swords. Yeah. No way. But yeah, yeah, the, uh, the, how they carve the handles, the wooden handles, and so making the blades. So when you're in your, when you're on the beach <laughs> snorkeling. Yeah, I was in the beach snorkeling, and then <laughs> you surface, and then you have like four <laughs> military guys like constantly watching you. <laughs> Are you serious? So yeah, they're, yeah. So they're, they're there. On the, on the they're on the sand. They're just standing there. Yeah, with they're gun. just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with their armalites. <laughs> so surreal. One of the most surreal. Anyway, I, who did you go there with? Was it just you? Was it, were you I invited or? another blogger, uh, pinaytravelejunkie.com. Okay. Yeah. Gay Mitra Imami. She's a Filipina blogger, but she's based in Australia. And she was in the country at that time. And I invited her to tag along because Sulu was also on her bucket list. Uh, so at least, you know, you had somebody to share the experience Yeah, but with. she was just there, like, for a few, like, a shorter, uh, like, a three or four days, you know, like, much shorter. I stayed there much longer. Mm. So these guys, these Marines, they're they're the ones who... Fight the bandits and the terrorists. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I get it. No, but, like, they were your... <laughs> they were your... Escorts. They, they were your, like, literally Military the escorts. you were traveling Security with. Security escorts, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were and my my tour guide as well. And they were every I mean everywhere you went, they were there. Yeah. You we, were not allowed to go no. places without them. Yeah, it's like walking, <laughs> like eating in the carinderia, like they were there. <laughs> like two men would be posted like at the entrance and then 
some would be on the table accompanying me. So really it's kind of nerve wracking because it, you feel like it calls more attention if you have these guys around with you. But in Sulu, you, military presence is like you see them a lot, so it doesn't feel weird like to have to have them around. I can't. <laughs> but I usually don't have. Uh, that, I think that that's the one and only place where I had military escorts. I mean, in in in. Tawi Tawi, I had a couple of policemen with me, but they were in plain clothes, so it was fine. The Tawi Tawi is safe. Tawi Tawi is also in Mindanao. Yeah, it's like uh, in Sulu Archipelago, like at the very ah, tip, okay, but okay. much farther and much closer to Malaysia. Like we, I went to this um, island called Sitangkai, and it was much closer to Borneo than it was to main, mainland Tawi Tawi. So, and there it's like. Just there in uh, what was what was the name of the city? Hulu, uh, Hulu, Hulu. Yeah, that one is kind of more like heavily militarized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other- because that's where you know that's where a lot of like the camp. That's that's where the camps of the terrorists are. Like the Abu Sayyaf are based there, so they still have their camps. But they're they've been you know their forces have been weakening in recent years. So when you but were there, still, there was no incident. No, there were. There oh, was there like were? yeah, yeah, like the 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 soldiers would be talking over dinner about like who was kidnapped earlier in the day and stuff like that. <laughs> like there was a, uh, and the uh, it was crazy because these terrorists were were getting desperate and they were just like kidnapping even the locals, like local people, not just visitors. So like. There was a time. There's one day that I was there that there was a construction worker who was who was kidnapped by the no yeah bandits. At any point, were you like scared? Yeah, of course. Especially like when I take out my camera and have to take pictures. So, because it calls more attention, and you know, but I felt really safe. <laughs> Because <laughs> sur- surrounded by uh, like 14, 12, or fourteen soldiers at one point, even really, yeah. I can't, I can't imagine having that experience. <laughs> <laughs> like I like being able- like I knew, I knew. Yeah, I was also surprised because I, I knew that I, I'd have an escort, but I wasn't expecting like a dozen of them. No, <laughs> yeah. the the other the other place that I read in the in the piece was uh, Sierra Madre. No? Yeah, you know, I tried to Google it. I couldn't find it on Google Maps. Where is that exactly? Like, uh, no, because Sierra Madre is the longest. It's the longest mountain range in the Philippines. It's it, it's like the it's like the spine of of Luzon Island that runs ah, on the okay. closer to the eastern coast. It's like I searched Sierra Madre, and then a few places came out. Yeah, because and, it's like it yeah, runs okay, from it. Cagayan province all the way down to yeah. Rizal <laughs> near Manila, like the uh, mountain range. But yeah. I think the the one I was talking about was Northern Sierra Madre Natural Park, which is in Isabela, Isabela province. It was pretty, that was really cool. Like one of the best adventures I've had in the Philippines. Why? What happened? I, because I went there on assignment for Smile Magazine. I think this was like in 2000, not so sure, 2011 or 2010. I'm not so sure. Anyway, I went there to, yeah, cover Northern Sierra Madre Natural Park, which is like the largest forest, you know, has the largest forest cover in the Philippines. Like, the natural park is as big uh, has the same uh if i'm not mistaken as as the same land area as switzerland okay so it's like really huge but i mean the easy way to get there is that you can take a flight from kawayan city in isabella there for 30 minutes and be go to palanan which is like a the town on the eastern coast of cuz you can't get there by by land because the Sierra Madre Mountains, there are no roads cutting across the Sierra Madre at that part of the mountain range. So the, 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 the most practical way to get there is by, by air. Mm-hmm. But we can't promote that because I'm writing for Cebu Pacific, right? But they want to talk about Sierra Madre. So I had to do it by, by, oh. by sea. <laughs> oh. So I, it was also fun because I, I wanted to get there by sea and then fly out, just fly out by plane. But to get there by sea, you have to go all the way up to the northern, northeastern tip of Luzon in, uh, Santa Ana, 
Cagayan, which is a jump off point to a really popular island uh called Palawi, which is which is like one of the settings where they filmed uh, Survivor. They had Survivor Cagayan there. Okay. But we uh, we went to Santa Ana port and then there are boats that There are boats that travel between Santa Ana Port and Maconacon, which is one of the towns along the Isabella's East Coast. So that's where we rode the 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 banca from from that spot to to uh, Maconacon. And the trip was supposed to be eight hours, but because something went wrong with our boat, it it lasted for fourteen hours. I so I was that was the longest. Time I've been on a on a on a banka and yeah you're talking like a the, small banka right like a little uh, no, no 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 more like ganang lancha uh, a bit bigger what's a lancha what's that lancha I don't know Bisaya ben or I don't know I also I don't know I'm that not, many Bisaya words <laughs> I'm not so sure if it's Bisaya or General Tagalog lancha is like a bigger much bigger it's it looks like a banka it has an outrigger. Uh, but, but it like can accommodate wooden boats. Yeah, yeah, but it can uh, accommodate more people. But still, mm, like yeah, uh, yeah, but still yeah. out in the hours on that. And if you look at the geography, like we're we're out in the open sea. I mean, that part of the Philippines is like facing the Pacific. We're like run. We're like traveling down the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, so the waves must have been surprisingly. Huge. I don't know why it was like crazy calm. Like, know, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's like super flat. When really? we were there, we we're just really lucky. I think it's also because we went there at June, and they said that's the calmest uh, yeah. time of the of the of the year. Yeah, generally, if I'm not mistaken, like the 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 surf season in the Philippines. Yeah, June, July, August. It's it's because it's. Not really I think I, I don't know the scientific term, but I think it's a when the doldrum happens. It's like when when the when the Northeastern monsoon, the Amihan wind and the Habagat kind of like cancel out each other and it's like really calm. Oh, like no uh, one is stronger than the other. So it's like there's, mm. there's, there's no wind. There's not is much that the wind right there. That's the reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because oh. the Amihan, the Amihan sea, I uh, know, no, the Habagat starts like July or something onwards and then ends like November. So soon, Amihan will, um, the Amihan season will start again. I think you also mentioned. What did you mention in? It uh, was it that trip. Remember, there was like dolphins or something. No, that that was it. Yeah, yeah there were kinda, there were wild dolphins like following. No, while well, you're yeah. uh, while well, you're uh, on the boat, that's cool. Yeah, it was cool, but it felt like we were on like an episode of like Survivor. I don't know, Castaway, because like we we didn't even bring food enough food. Like I only had crackers and a <laughs> bottle of water. Yeah, kind of sad. Like I think. When you're when you're on trips, ba so, you know when you hear people talk about trips, it's in this like condensed five minute, ten minute version, but a big chunk of it is kind of your thirteen hours. Oh uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, what, what did you do while you were kind of in I was situations like that? <laughs> I was taking, I was sleeping and I was just, there was no, there wasn't even any cover on the boat. We were under uh. the sun for 14 hours, but I had this like, um, I had a malong, I had a sarong with me, which I bring, which is really nifty because, you know, you can use it as like a blanket or a portable changing room. So I had it, I was covered. I was like in my, in, in, under the Malong. And I was just like taking pictures. The coastline there is really, really nice. Like it's really remote. And unlike other places in the Philippines where you see like seaside villages along that entire coast, like you don't see any, well, a, yeah. any communities at all. It's like I, water, sand, yeah, yeah, yeah. greenery. <clears throat> and yeah, that's yeah it. you check it, like you check it out like on, on Google Maps. Like there are barely any, any, any villages there. No? Yeah, and that know, So the, that Sierra Madre mountain pass, mount, the, the Sierra Madre mountains, that, that range, stretch, yeah. the range, it's just really high. You can't, so the roads can't even Yeah, yeah, there are no roads cutting through no? it. But I, I think they're building roads, which is also something that's controversial because they're cutting right across the natural park. Oh. But yeah, soon roads will reach that, that part. But yeah, it's the it's just a natural obstacle that entire mountain range. It's so, mm. it's like imp- impenetra- 
impenetrable jungle. So, so you've been traveling for a while, na bay, and then you also mentioned like you bring this like sarong, like a. Not always. Uh, I haven't been bringing it lately. Oh, but, it was just on the trip. Yeah, yeah, but do you have like a? <laughs> like, do you have? Like, but it's it is something that's uh like nifty to bring because it, it can be like many things. You, a blanket, a head cover. Do you have like a list of things that oh, you usually bring or a list? No, no, no. I have a mental list, but Oh really? You don't you don't have like a you know some people like like I, like a I, like an actual checklist? Not, or, uh, I would just say I mean, you know <laughs> I like I have a checklist. <laughs> you have a checklist you know, on your travel. Oh yeah, like well, you're I, so organized. No, no, just so that I don't forget stuff. Like, wow. like uh, it'll say it'll say uh, stuff like toothbrush, <laughs> uh, passport if needed, or <clears throat> you know, just before I, I travel a lot, that most of those things are like already packed. You know, bag. yeah, you know what I mean. Ah. So it's like I don't. I just throw in like fresh new set of clothes. Oh I'm, really? I'm, I'm I'm all set. Yeah. You don't have like a I, well. When I say list, it's making it more okay. uh, official than it really is. But like like, like the a, must-haves. Yeah, you mean. yeah. Are there like things that you need to bring? Like you usually bring in every trip. I'm just curious. I mean, coming from somebody who travels as much <sighs> as you do, but just practical. It also changes. Depends on like. The destination. Am I am I going hiking? Am I going up a mountain this time, or am I just uh, staying on the beach? So it also depends. Like the because I don't like bringing so many things. Like it, it they really have to to be all the things that I have to bring really have to be something that I'll use during the trip. So when you go out on a trip, are you always bringing a laptop? Yes, I should because like emails come in or I have to write something or I have to edit something while on the road. So yeah. But if I had the choice, I wish that at some trips I could just like leave behind my laptop. Oh, yeah? yeah. So you bring a laptop. Yeah, camera. I bring a yeah, camera, laptop. I always have to bring a tripod because I travel alone, so like ah. I could do without a tripod, but in social media, like, there's more interaction you know, when you're in the photo. You know, I wanted like, to ask you, I was like, why? Who takes your photos? Yeah. <laughs> people are so intrigued all the time. Like, who takes your photos? Are you really alone? Who's with you? No, oh, I have, it's like my trusty tripod. And people don't believe me. Yes, it is my tripod. And I'm lucky because I love my new DSLR because I can uh, control it with an app on my phone. So I can just it was so you more can see the screen. but even before I had that I I was just like putting it on timer like ten seconds and I brought you <laughs> it's so funny like the behind the scenes just to take that shot like people just don't know like you running back and forth yeah because yeah but I know now what, I know it's <clears throat> but now it's much easier because <clears throat> I have my app and I can actually remotely view what the camera is seeing on my phone so, so I can frame. Better. I can I can post better and be in the frame better because I'm so particular about yeah you can like ask a, str- a random stranger and I've done that like you can ask a random stranger to take photos but it's never I'm so particular about the framing and the composition it still has to be a nice photo because when I take photos of myself like it's a it's not just <clears throat> I'm not like one of those influencers where it's like just all about me or well, lifestyle influencers have to focus on their clothes, right? What they're wearing. But like when I'm in a photo, like I want the, it has to be also about the surroundings, the place. It's so an that's, environmental so it's photo. A, it's, it's an environmental portrait. Yeah. Yeah. There, there. Environmental portrait. <laughs> so it has right. to be me in, in the view. The view has to be really nice as well. Yeah. Because you know what you know, like in terms of engagement, if, if there's a big difference, if there's a person there... Before, yeah. When I started out in Instagram, I just want to share my beautiful photos of destinations. But I don't know. People just want that human element. Want there, There's like there's more engagement when you're in the photo. No, but, I li- but I like to switch it up. Like it's alternating. Like when you see my feed, like it's a oh, view yeah. and then like a food. Or... I know, there's, there's definitely thought into it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you're... Before, in the beginning, no. But later on, like, yeah, there's like... It has to look good. Like, your feed has to look good even on the 
like that view where you see all the no why why do the that grid. why 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 bother with that like I remember <clears throat> I remember so I uh, went on this hiking trip once and then there was this uh uh kanang murag influencer person I forgot honestly I forgot her name no <laughs> name her not, name uh, her she's not from Cebu my good and then, okay, you know, okay, and okay. I didn't know who she was because. Like somebody else invited her, and then I I met her there, and she's super super nice. Takes really good photos, like ridiculously good. And then I remember just hanging out, and then I was just looking at her feed. I was like, oh, I was wondering, oh, it's a photos missing. So apparently, what she used to, what she was doing was she she'd post it, and then if it doesn't get enough engagement, oh, she would take it down take and then. And then put it, and then put a different photo, and then uh, if it reaches because a they certain, want, yeah, they want the history uh, to to look, look yeah, really, yeah. and uh, and then in my head I was like, okay, I get it, I get why she would do that. I'm not gonna do it because I don't care about that, like you know, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. about. But uh, <clears throat> so I'm just curious, like why, why bother, diba? Well, I guess they want to people to see that. There's a lot of engagement and they have a lot of following because that's a struggle now, especially with Instagram, is that your content doesn't. I don't know. It's like Instagram's so weird. There are these pictures that I post, which I don't expect to be like, would have a lot of engagement, but somehow, I don't know. Instagram's like showing them everywhere, maybe in like the suggested users' feed or something, and it gets a lot of likes. So I, I don't know what's up with, with Instagram. Oh, but is it but like... I've done that. I'm I'm guilty of that. Like I've done that a few. I don't do it as much as others do, but I've done that. Like if it's like really low engagement, then I just like the and if the photo isn't not that nice anyway, so I just like delete it. Mm. Is it like? But others like I don't care. if I really like the photo. Like I don't care. Like if it doesn't get any engagement. Yeah, it's like the storytelling portion. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Especially when I like when I was in Japan, like I do. One post per day, so I couldn't I couldn't take out one photo because it's like the en- the entries were like day day one of twelve day then the next ah, yeah. day two of, <laughs> day two of twelve. Yeah. It's like I was sharing like well, the highlight of my day in Japan, like my twelve days in Japan. Mm. So I couldn't take out a photo. It's me. I was thinking maybe she's doing that because you know, Silla. They a lot a lot depends on getting sponsorship. Yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. You know. So uh, I was, I wonder if that's uh, an aspect of it, right? Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, like, this whole like influencer yeah. thing. is a double-edged sword, right? <laughs> yeah, right, I'm just curious about it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I'm always curious about it. Because I, I always find that, kanang, like, what is, what is an, inf- I, I remember I have this one podcast, uh, with uh, her name's Isa, please, and then she's like a local. Uh, she would she would not like me to call her an influencer, so she is like a local like blogger or something. And then yeah. I forgot the title of the podcast. It's she, always like that. Like when there's like a label and it becomes too mainstream, or people start reacting to it. Like you, you don't want no, no. Like it was like blogger, and the blogger was cool, and then now people don't want to be called bloggers. Like. You know, yeah, well, she like... she had she ranted against the whole influencer <laughs> thing in the pod, which I found which I found uh, influencers are f- influencers are fl- fine. I mean, getting influencers like as long as they really do influence. More like that's why I feel <laughs> like there's a it's a line that that frankly is very blurry. Like you get what I'm saying? In what way? Like, um. Because she, in her podcast, she was saying, uh, yeah, you know, now it's before it used to be, okay, a number of followers and then eventually engagement. And she's like, you know, you can, you can fake engagement. She, she, yeah, yeah, she yeah, really yeah. said, like, she, like she had, she mentions in the pod, which I'm not talking out of line, like it's literally <laughs> in the podcast. <laughs> it's, uh, she mentions like, you know, like there are groups where, <clears throat> can I like, when you post something, you're like, oh, you post it on the group and then. The people in the group. Ah, were, yeah, yeah, yeah. They also no. I haven't tried that, but I've been invited to join one. Oh, yeah, to stuff like that. Yeah, like uh, you like other people. Like if you're in that group, you like 
other yeah, people's posts. Yeah, then you post. know, you comment. You'll be like, yeah. oh, nice post. Yeah, then, yeah, yeah. I always found it. I that's why there's this. It's this line that is very uh, unclear, no? Because I think I think the reason why because a lot of brands also, it's very clear. Like you know, if you wanted to go mm. to like somebody with real influence, no, uh, there's a price tag there. It's also very clear. But then there's also like brands who don't really want to spend too much money. Yeah. No, I want. Yeah. So they want the they want like the free version, like you just give them stuff or uh, not. Yeah, yeah. No? So, Maybe it also depends on like the reach or like the caliber of the person, the influencer that you're getting, right? That's why a lot of like the top quote unquote influencers are actually like they're celebrities to begin with, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, well, because like I feel a lot of times I don't know why. A person is an influencer, for example. Like, for example, like, like, let's say your feed on Instagram. Like, I have a reason to follow it. There's, like, I get to see places, these really different places. I get to learn stories. Yeah. About places that yeah. uh, I'm not going to have a chance to to do or go. Like you know, we started this conversation eat, about eating rats and tarantulas. <laughs> that's not, that's very unlikely to happen to me in the future. Aren't you? Aren't you like adventurous with food? Like you're easily grossed out and stuff. <sighs> Am I you adventurous won't, with food. You're you're not adventurous with food. I mean, I'll, I'll like eat under something, but, like you have to be pressured, like like peer pressure to do it. Yeah, I'm not sure I would eat a rat. You know why not? I don't know. I think I eat the tarantula though. Really? Yeah, I feel like that's why I, I, I veered towards rat as being the weirdest thing. I think it's because you always have, like, <laughs> you have, you, like, you <clears throat> you have this image of a rat, like the city rat. I think so. The Maybe if I rat. saw the the cooked one. Yeah. Oh, what the, I mean, the, 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 the uh, a brown clean one. You know. <laughs> <laughs> to change your mind. <laughs> I want to eat a rat now. I'm craving for a rat. <laughs> You'd rather eat the tarantula. I think I would rather eat the tarantula. The, tantr- I think it's a spider. the, the tarantula, in my experience, was tastier. Molagi. Especially. Oh, yeah. No, but even having not heard that, I think I would have I would have leaned towards that. Like uh, in my head, it's the same as. Um, What's the weirdest thing you've uh, you asked? Like the weird things I've eaten. What's the weirdest thing you have ate? Uh, I'm sure it fails in comparison. Uh, I don't know. Man. Any any it's weird not, no, any I, I, weird dishes no, like, that you tried in the Philippines? No, like, like balut, that's it. Probably. <laughs> do you like balut? I like yeah, balut. I like balut. It's good. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't go Where, out of I my don't, way. I don't eat balut though when I'm here in Cebu. Like, I don't think like is there a good place to eat balut here in Cebu? No, you just go to those vendors. Uh, uh, to be is honest, there like I, a specific place? Like, I always they I always think that it's better to eat in like Manila. The balut, oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I don't know. Like, I was with a friend. This was years ago, so that was the last time I ate balut. Where in Fuente? No, like we were just drinking, and then she's like, "Oh, I feel like I, I want to get balut." So we she brought me to this place in Lahog. You like don't encounter the... it as much here as you do when you're in Manila, though. Oh, ba? Yeah. Why do you see like a lot of balut vendors when you're like out drinking somewhere? Like, well, number one, I have not been out drinking somewhere in a long time, <laughs> so I am not the person to ask. <laughs> but. Uh, no, I see that there's so there's balut a, is your most like. I'm turning I, the tables now. I'm like grilling you on your. Yeah, I think yeah, I think balut would be my. How about like um, crickets? Because we have crickets or locusts. Have you tried? I don't lo- think I've tried. I may have. Because uh, kap kapapangan, kapampangan. Um, oh, they have that. Yeah, and there's like a fancy restaurant in BGC that serves it adobo style. No, I was going to say... Uh, Abe, Abe. Have you heard uh, of the restaurant? Abe, no. it's a Kapampangan. I don't oh, know really? if it's still open. It's in the oh. fort in Manila. And they serve really good adobo. Kamar- Kamaro. I think Kama- it's called Kamaro. That would be um, interesting. Because the, the, the tarantula to me is the same level as crickets. Which isn't that... Hmm. Oh, have you tried that uh, chicha worm? Those uh, crunchy... Crispy ah, worms no, from yeah, Bohol. I don't, don't want to eat that. No, I've seen those. They, I've seen. Why not? I, yeah, they're good. No, crunchy, crunchy. They look like little maggots. Yeah, oh, yeah, mealworms. Yeah, no, I've yeah. seen those. There's, they, I think they have that in downtown, right? 
I think I've seen they some sell of it in downtown. Downtown. Right. I've only seen them in Bohol. That's where they make them in in Baclayon. Moba? Yeah. I think I've seen. I'm pretty it's sure. It's a new I've industry, it like a new cottage industry. That yeah, that I can't eat it. No. Why not? It's really good. It's like it's just like chips. It's like really crunchy. You're making me uncomfortable just thinking about it. No, I can't. <laughs> it, it it looks crunchy though. I'll give you crunchy, that. Crunchy, salty. It's good. Good. Yeah. Uh, Good beer, beer chow. I feel like it would be. So it's salty. Yeah, it's salty. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> so you've traveled to like every spl- every spot in the Philippines, no, no, like every province. Not every spot. Well, I mean, every every province. Pro- I've I've stepped foot on all eighty one provinces. Hardest one to get to was Sulu. Hardest one, hardest one to get to. I think because those, yeah, they seem to be hard to get to when you look at them at the map because they're like islands, right? But you can fly directly into those places. Mm. I think the hardest ones are the ones that require a really long, long land, like long bus rides, like the, like the interior provinces in the Philippines, like in the highlands of Cordillera. Like the Apayao, Kalinga, Ifugao. Ah. Those are like hard, harder to get to because it requires more time. Like you can't fly into those places. Oh, and then wait, Kalinga's where you got that tattoo, right? Yeah. This By one. the um, Wangod. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's what's her name? She's the famous Wa- Wangod. Wang Wanghod. Wanghod. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Like, see, that's like the the caterpillar. <laughs> no caterpillar. Is it a caterpillar? It's a caterpillar. No, no, it's not. A lot of people think it's a caterpillar or a stalk of corn. People think it's a stalk of corn, but it does look like a stalk. What a, is it again? It's a centipede. Centipede. Yeah, it's a uh, the symbol. I wanted to, you know, it's funny. Like, so a lot of people go there because she's become famous, right? And in, in recent years, and a lot of people go there and then they make all these designs and have her tattoo it, which I think beats the purpose. Like, I wanted to go there and get something that's. A pattern that was part of their culture, so I picked this. Mm. But sometimes she picks for the for for the guest. Um, she they, yeah they have this book that was like published by this uh, tattoo expert uh, anthropologist about Kalinga tattoos, and it has all the traditional patterns there. And they all mean something. And they all mean something. And then the centipede is like the symbol of the warrior, like the it's like the warrior's best friend. The centipede warrior's yeah, best yeah. friend, and like the it's like a, the protector sy- symbolized protection. Ah. So I wanted to put it on my left side because like the left side is like for me like the weaker side of my body. So I put it on the left on my left arm. Yeah, that's cool. Like uh, I feel that's the nice thing with like uh, when you get a, a tattoo, you know, it has to mean. It's but nice I was surprised that something. I got it. Like I'm even surprised that I went through it. Like I'm not a tattoo. Is that your only tattoo? Purse is my only tattoo, ah. yeah. And I don't have that. And they said, like, once... They were warning me, like, oh, once you get one, you want to have another one. It's like, no. <laughs> it's just like, I'm happy with this one. <laughs> no, because I... I uh, one of the one of my other interviews... I interviewed his name's Boots Brandon. He's a tattoo artist. Mm-hmm. And then... <clears throat> the nice thing, though, is we, a lot of people, they'll get a tattoo. And then it's it usually really does mean something mm. to people. Yeah. And... Like he remembers his first tattoo. His first tattoo was uh, the machine that they use to, to the, the 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 machine that makes a tattoo. Like a, I forgot what it's called. Like the, the tattoo gun. The tattoo gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he has a tattoo of a tattoo gun. Yeah, because he he well, he has a good story. But uh, he was a he was a tattoo artist for oh, a yeah. while, but he didn't have any tattoo on his body. No. And then now, when he finally got that, now he's full. His his, yeah, yeah. his two sleeves of tattoo, but that that tattooing has been, become a huge part of his life. So the tattoo yeah. gun. Yeah, yeah. Most people, most people have tattoos have like a really significant reason for putting one, for well, having yeah. one. It's not just like, well, of course you have those stories of like random drunk, yeah, <laughs> like tattoos that they have like. <laughs> Fortune, unfo- unfortunately, unfortunately, fortunately, you don't have something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. This was something that was like I was sober. Yeah, no, and it's cool. You thought about it, like protection, left side, your weaker side, your right-handed. No, 
Can, uh, what are you like um surprising places in the Philippines that you've or any anywhere that you've been to? Like a sur- anything that surprised you? Um like a lot of these like um like there are many like in in Mindanao, there's like, like I was saying earlier, like Sulu and Tawi Tawi, and also like these places that you just hear of and you don't know how it actually looks when you're there, like the Nagat Islands, like what's there. But when I was when I went there, like it was like it was like really beautiful islands over there as well. What's it's the, like where, this where island is group. Uh, it's near Shargao. Oh, okay. That it's an island group that was like separated from Surigao del Norte, so now it's like a separate uh, province in itself, an island province. And it says like you don't hear much about that place. And when I went there and I wrote about it, like it has like really dramatic like um, stone formations and you know something like little versions of the ones you see in Palawan. So yeah, that was like a, s- a surprise and. Aside from the Philippines, like another place, I, another country I always like visiting almost, I'm, I'm there like almost every year is Indonesia. Like there's so much to see there. It's like, it's like the Philippines on steroids. Like, cause it's like the biggest, biggest archipelago in the world. They have like, they don't even know how much, how many islands they have. It's like somewhere between 15,000 and 17,000 islands. And it's huge. And people just, when you say Indonesia, people just think that it's all about Java and Bali. Like, well, Bali, Bali is the most popular place that people go to. But there's so much to see there. Like, when you look at the map, like, there's so many places to see. And I think, like, from Sumatra, there's, like, uh, Indonesia and Borneo. Like, most of Borneo is actually Indonesia, not Malaysia. People, like, the Malaysian part of Borneo is like the one that's is really developed for tourism. That's why people are familiar with Sabah, with uh, Kota Kinabalu, and mm. you know that that part of Borneo. But the other side, two thirds of uh, Borneo is actually uh, Kalimantan, which is Indonesia. And I was there. I was there last May to write a story. I got an assignment to write about uh, the Mahakam River, which is a river, a huge river there. Which has, uh, dolphins, river dolphins. Oh, really? A rare species of river dolphin. Huh? So freshwater dolphins? Yeah, freshwater dolphins. They're called the Irrawaddy dolphins. Uh, they're called Irrawaddy. Irrawaddy is a river in Burma, in Myanmar, but they're found in, uh, off the coast of India. Yeah, they're, they're found in salt water and in, in river systems. Ah, so, so they can go to salt water also. No, if they're, if the population is in fresh water, they just, they just live in fresh water. If they're in salt water, the population just sticks to salt water. But of course, like, they evolve somehow, like, to live. That is so cool. Yeah, they're that. called Irrawaddy dolphins and they're found in the Philippines too. So, actually, my first story on the Irrawaddy dolphins was on the Irrawaddy population found near Bacolod. And people are so surprised. There's this like really exotic animal that's found just south of Bacolod. So the the ones here in the Philippines are saltwater. Yes, the ones in the we we don't have we don't really have like huge river yeah, systems. That's right. That's like, I mean, that. as big as the ones elsewhere in Southeast Asia. Uh, um, it it's funny that you mentioned like uh, Indonesia is like the Philippines on steroids because I remember. When we went to <clears throat> Bali a few years ago, I really enjoyed it, and I think I like Bali. Like, it, yeah, yeah, it's touristy. People go there, uh, but you can find you can find places that are like all to yourself. And what I love about Bali is that there's like really something like whatever interest you have as a traveler, or whatever budget you have, there's you can have fun in Bali. There's a place mm. for you in Bali. So you, yeah, you were saying. No, no. I, I yeah. was, we went there, and I enjoyed it so much. And I was wondering why. Why do I like this place? No, and then I think then I realized it reminds me a lot of the Philippines. Yeah, no? that's what I love about Indonesia because it's like the Philippines, but it's not. So it's yeah. like it's like a sense of when I'm traveling Indonesia, it's like I get the sense of the familiar and the exotic at the same time. 
It's so, super exotic. Like the yeah, but at the same time, it feels familiar. And I, yeah. I, yeah, so I, I f- and much of the Philippines, like us as a people, we we descended from Indonesians. So it's just like maybe our roots are there. So no, we descended from Malaysians and Indonesians. So yeah, no, because it it's it's very. It's not like we were talking about Singapore a while ago, and it's super like clean. It's super sanitized, and Indonesia is not like that. And then I think me, and I suspect you also, you veer towards towards that a, a little more Kinau boy style. Yeah, yeah, I like the exciting cities that are like a little bit but, uh, the 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 neatest city that I like is like Taipei. I like Taipei. Oh yeah, type. Oh, yeah, 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 the right. food, the topography. I like like I don't like flat. <laughs> that's why I like Cebu more than Manila. It's like there are mountains. Oh me. Like yes. visually, you know. It's uh, like Manila is like a floodplain, so it's like a sprawl. Tokyo is also like a sprawl. Bangkok also. But I like Bangkok. I'm I don't sur- know. I'm surprised that you think of it in those terms, no? What? Kind of how the topography of a place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I like seeing the sea and the mountains, like close to both. That's why I like Cebu. It's like you can go a little bit elevated to a cooler place nearby. Because in Manila, it's like you yeah, have yeah. to go like five hours to Baguio, or I don't know, like maybe an. Uh, no, no, no. You have to go to Tagaytay, which is like two hours and a half. So. I've never, I've never thought of places in that way. No, I mean now. Now I think I think lately I've been thinking about it a little bit more because I started cycling. So going up mountains is a thing, and uh, you know they want to torture. Have, have you been to Taiwan? Cy- yeah, we were there. C- cycling is big there. Yeah, yeah. we I um we visited. There's a brand that I like called uh, Rafa. Yeah, and we they have a shop there in, Thai- oh, yeah, in yeah. Taiwan. So we visited that shop. We were there last year, this year I forget. Yeah, and then uh, it was fun. How did you find Taipei? Was it too neat? Or? No, I it's like it. a bit rough. You know, it's not um, really so neat. You know, it, you know, it uh, it reminded me. So, okay, it the the people kind of kind of reminded me of Filipinos in a way. No, uh, like, Taiwanese are nice. I like them. they're nice. Yeah, and uh, and then they're not super. I'll give you an example. We were in this restaurant, and then. Below us was this road. It was a yeah. one-way road. So all the cars, motorcycles, they were going this one way. And then <laughs> and then there was this one guy on an electric motorcycle who went the opposite route. Yeah. And then just didn't give a shit. Like, he was just going and then, you know, there's motorcycles coming at him. He was just <laughs> swerving in there. And then, because the place that he was going to was, you know, nearer from that corner. He didn't want to turn back. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then in my head, I was like, wow, that's very Filipino of this guy. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was thinking about it. I wonder if Mark, there seems to be some similarities in yeah, terms yeah. of uh, personality. But w- the one thing I really, but, so I was thinking about, like, there's some, there's similarities, but at the same time, we visited, I'm blanking, I'm really bad with the place, with the, with the names of these places. So we visited some of the outskirts of uh, Taipei. Yeah. There's, you know, the, like the, a little bit north? You know, you know the place where you have the balloon. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yifan or something? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, I, Ju- I, I just, Ju- I'm more Ju-fan. familiar with the other one, Jufan. Is that the one where the Jufan is like with uh, the, the popular tea house. Right yeah, the with one, the lanterns, the one, yeah, the one where yeah. the one where the sidewalks yeah. are stairs. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, that's my what was what is it again? What's the name of the place? Jufan. Jufan. Yeah. My story there was so I have, we have we have two kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then they're at the time they were two years old and less than one year old, so you have to carry them everywhere. So we had we had. Uh, you don't have one of those, like we did. Baby. Yeah, we had one. Here. One for one kid, yeah. And then the other, the other one, the bigger one, uh, we had the. He was just walking around, which was and fine. He get, and he gets tired eventually. Wait, they carry those me. Are stairs. <laughs> yeah, so and can was, get crowded. Were you there on a weekday or yeah, a it weekend? Was super crowded on a weekday. You were there on a weekend. I I don't know. Oh, what don't day go we there on there. a weekend. It's like super crowded. Crazy. But we. It was fine though. It was fine because, <laughs> so. 
I saw the stairs, and then he looked at me. He's like, "Daddy, carry," and I'm like, "Wait." <laughs> I looked up and there, there's no way I can carry you this far. So we had to bargain with them. We told them, Mano, we're going to give you ice cream. We didn't know there's ice cream up there. There's probably ice cream. We're going to give you ice cream up there. Just walk. So thank God this, he walked most of the way. We found then, <laughs> then we found an ice cream shop. We had to buy him ice cream. And as he got the ice cream, I had to carry him now. So I think we went to that famous tea place. They wouldn't let us in. I guess reservation only. It got full. Right across it, there was another tea place cafe that no one was in. Yeah. So we went inside that one. That was really nice. I got a really, we got a really nice view of the place. Uh, there's nobody there. It was just us. Mm, mm. The food was good. The whatever drink we ordered was good. Yeah. And then Ta- we just, yeah, we just hung out there for like two hours. Taiwan for me is like one of those places. Like I had no idea what. What's there? And then it's like so much to see there. And it's, yeah. you know, when you look at it at the map, like you think there's nothing much to see because it's like, it's like a, th- it's like one third the size of Luzon. So it's like mm-hmm. really, really small, but there's so much to see. Like I've only been there like two or three times and it's just a lot to see. Like the last time I was there, like was last year and then I went to this, to this like highland mountain town called Alishan. Okay. With a century old ra- rail. It's pretty cool. Like, these were like the, the railway system was built during the Japanese colonial times and it runs through the forest of like these trees that are like not hundreds of years old. They have trees that are like a thousand years old or, or more. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like really ancient trees. You ride the, tra- you rode the train. Yeah. You have to ride the train oh, okay. to go to, uh, to a spot where where you watch the sunrise over Jade Mountain, which is like the tallest peak in all of Taiwan. So you have all these like sites, and they also there's also like on the east coast like Taroko Gorge, which is like a, a river gorge that it's like a river that cuts through a a canyon with like um, marble walls and stuff. So it's like pretty dramatic, like the landscapes there. What's the name of the place? And the food Taroko Taroko Gorge. That's where you go. To see the the that's a river gorge. It's like another spot, ah, okay. and then Alishan is like a little bit south, like in the central mountains. Yeah, I, I liked Taiwan. Taiwan was good. The it, food is good. Yeah, and then well, so what? <coughs> yeah, I, I just I just re- I just remembered. So, so it was a success. The ice cream. Uh, the, ice cream was a success. But one of the things that I realized when we were going around, you know, they we had a tour bus, so the bus was driving around, and I was looking out the window. And it's really clean. Like, you know, the, the waters are clean. Uh, we were in the outskirts, like in, I guess, the province, Konohai, for the Manaba. And then super clean. Like, it wasn't littered with stuff, but it made me really sad. Because around here, like even just Cebu. Yeah. You know, you go you go out to towards the, out of the city. And you'll see, like, the, the rivers filled with, like, garbage. Uh, yeah. You know, it yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah, just, yeah. it made I know me what you mean. yeah, yeah. It made me sad just just thinking about it, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's an attitude. I think it, you know, it's like it's really hard, like changing people's attitudes, and it starts. You have to start them young. You have to work with a new generation. I don't know what, I don't know. I've always questioned myself, like why. Like the mentality of just like throwing trash. Like for me, because I was like brought up never to throw anything. So I really have this guilt. Like if I, if I throw something, like I have this guilt. So maybe it's really just the, your upbringing. I think that's the, you know, that's. But, so I don't know how. <laughs> like, you can have all those like environmental posters and stuff, but if it's a habit and it's like already ingrained in you to. Don't feel any responsibility when you throw trash outside your car window or to just dump trash on the on the on the river or outside the boat a running no, boat or do I don't you, know. Do you remember one of the thing I don't know if you're gonna remember this, but when we were in grade school, I for some reason I always this always stuck to my head that the uh when a student would throw trash in the classroom, the teacher would be like Oh, this is not your house. We do not throw trash on the floor. And then what always stuck with me was, 
You don't, yeah, you, you don't throw, throw trash, trash in yeah. your house wearing an Anabon. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 for some reason, I remember that. <laughs> but it's ironic because there are many Filipinos are really studio, uh, like, they're really in, like they make sure that their house, their garden is clean. I, I mean, their pro- their own properties are clean, but when they're outside, I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why there's like some sort of like, they act, yeah, they act differently when they're outside. They're, like, there's no sense of, I don't know. Maybe they don't have a sense of ownership. Like, you know, that's. But to be fair, I think the younger. Are getting better. Oh, yeah, the ones think? here. Yeah, like, anang, you know, I mean, there's this, you know, I mean. Uh, that's good to hear. I mean, we were railing, I was railing a little bit on social, against social media, but like, you know, it, it really does raise awareness, like, you know, the whole. Which I feel like it's a little stupid, but the whole like metal straw thing, it's a, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's kind of a good but thing. But it's a, you know, for what it's worth, it's like a start. It's a good start Moment to down. get people. But I just, <laughs> it just gets to a point where sometimes it's annoying yeah. when people are too focused on the plastic straw. Like there are so much more that people do. Like don't even like shame people who use plastic straws because there's so much ways. It's just, that's just a start, but. You can cut down on your use of plastic in other things way, way much more with way much more impact than just, you know, ditching straws, you know? More without. But people sometimes like get too caught up in just like the straw because they saw the poor turtle with a straw stuck up their nose. That's, that's how it started. Is that how it started? Yeah. There is this like viral video of this turtle that they found. I don't know where. There's this video of a turtle with a straw stuck up its nose and they had to pull it out. Oh, what? Yeah, and people started to really feel. Ah, that's the marketing to, of the uh, movement. Yeah, that's the started story. to hate straws. But it's a start that people are getting more uh, conscious of their of that. That's a that's that's a start. Mm. But more than straw, but and then it it does make an impact. You see, like that rippling to like government legis- legislation now. Like in Makati, I don't know if here in Cebu, but in Makati, um, plastic straws are not allowed. So ah. they don't have s- straws in Makati anymore. I mean, are they really? have, if they do have straws, it's just paper straws. Well, here in Mandawe, they don't have, they don't allow plastic bags anymore. Yeah. And what's really annoying here, <laughs> out goes the plastic straws. And then now you have these, I really hate these plastic gloves. Uh, plastic gl- ah like for for, for like in Larshan I first ah, saw yeah, that yeah, in Larshan yeah, 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 yeah. it's like one of the most unnecess- like it's even like I've used some <laughs> straws are uh, you're guilty <laughs> like straws are more like useful than plastic like these places should have like you know like how they did places where you had to eat with your hands before like there should be like a place to just to wash, wash your hands and food is much tastier when you f- actually feel what you're eating, not through like, like, oh, you're guilty. You're like all quiet now. No, I mean, I've done it. <laughs> I've, uh, I've done it, but you know, I regret like doing it. It's I have, a- I've not regretted it. I have not regretted <laughs> plastic straws. No, no, or, plastic uh, Or gloves. plastic gloves. Uh, <laughs> I, I have not regretted but any I of think, my plastic usage. No, I think, <laughs> yeah, I think plastic gloves are like not as necessary as plastic straws. No, but like, you know, like even kind of talk about legislation, like here in Mandawi, they don't do plastic, plastics. Yeah, You're I was at, You're, if you we were to, eating at this um, uh, eat all you can chicken place last night and I was happy like, oh, they have, um, they don't, they don't have straws, you know, they have like, oh, yeah? reusable cups uh. for the drinks because most of the people dine in because it's an eat all you can place. And there are no straws. They use reusable scuffs. And then in comes when they serve the plates, like the plastic gloves. The plastic um, gloves. <laughs> so like, well, you know, um, they started somewhere. <laughs> no, but here, if you go to the groceries, you get a you get a brown paper bag. Or you use... Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah that's, that's good. That's good. Like more and more. But yeah, these plastic gloves have to go. Yeah. But I think <laughs> we are going at like an hour plus. Oh, okay. So I didn't notice. That was really fast. Yeah, it's fun to just uh sit down and have and just talk. How but long how I thought, long was our conversation? It's like an hour twenty five now. Okay. And yeah, but I wanted to one before we end, I was I was thinking about which you mentioned 
like you pitched uh, uh, an article to a magazine, no? I was just wondering because I feel like for me, Bob, one of the 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 list I picture the listener of this podcast as somebody who wants to learn from somebody who's been there before and uh, and so if I want if I were if I wanted to be like a travel blogger or a travel writer, no, how does it work? What's what is how does that like uh like you mentioned that you were able to connect yourself to this company Inc. Ink, yeah. yeah. And then, and then it's. I guess it's in a way just snowballed from there. You were able to get assignments and everything. Yeah, yeah. But how does that work? Like, if I wanted to start writing, but most of the time, I mean, even now, I've been writing for ten years. It's the the co- the the real the common practice is really for the writers to pitch. Mm. You have to give ideas to these editors. I mean, these magazine editors are busy coming up with. You know, they can't like just come up with, although it happens, you know, they, they don't come up with story ideas on their own and then ask a writer to write it, although that happens. Most of the time, they get ideas from contributors, from writers. So it's up to you to really, you know, uh, come up with, you know, not just saying, hey, I want a story, I want to write something about Palawan. You know, it's not just saying that you want to write about a place, but what's your angle? Like, what about Palawan? Like, is it about, you know, and then something fresh, like you, travelers, know, you know, there's a lot of content right now and people can, people can, uh, people can find information about travel online. So you have to find content that's, you know, that I really would really want people to read magazines because, you know, magazines also, like, that's one of the challenges now. Like, the print is is dying. Like, people are moving to, to online media for for to, to read for travel information so it's all about finding that right angle like if you're talking about yeah i was talking like if you're if you're writing about palawan like people know palawan for its beaches so maybe a good angle is maybe the food in palawan like the cuisine how are the local chefs there like you know uh, creating or create creating uh you know getting inspiration from local ingredients because that's something that's not covered as much so basically like, something different yeah that, something fresh always look for something a fresh angle for a destination but how do you connect yourself to it how do you how does an editor know who you are either? you have to get magazines and read magazines and it's always listed there the contact the email of the editor oh so that works yeah you you have to you have to be persistent you have to have uh maybe in the beginning you should start writing first for for newspapers and magazines, even though they don't really pay that well, just to get your get, get to your your work out and also to get some practice. And at the same time, that when those when your work gets published, that becomes your um, your portfolio. So you have something to show to the editor when you when you email them some story ideas. So yeah, you introduce yourself. You're a writer. If you if you have a blog. That's oh, yeah, so my say. blog is yeah, my blog is also my my portfolio of what I do and where I've been. Did you and so my, you, you think your blog would have played a huge part in Yeah, definitely. Because my blog like show it shows there like my background and and everything. My background, my my work, my past work mm-hmm. and where I've been. So it, it shows there how I'm very familiar with particular places in Southeast Asia because I've been there many times. Or how you know I've been uh, traveling a lot around the Philippines, and it's a collaboration. Sometimes they'll say, "Oh no, you're you, uh, you know some of the good, better uh, editors would you know not always turn you down, but at least you're in their minds already when they look for writers. Sometimes they will be the ones to reach out. Hey, sometimes they 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 want a story on a particular destination, but they just don't know what the angle is. So yeah, we we want the story on Shargao and uh, and for the uh, December issue, for example, and they'd reach out and you know, do you have any ideas? So of course, like, what would you pitch about Shargao? Would you talk about surfing? It's like people, come on, how many articles on surfing? But one of the things like I heard is that kite kite uh, kiteboarding is 
In getting, Shadow? Yeah, it's getting big as well. So that's maybe an angle that you can explore. Maybe those are all the kite boarders that uh, came from Boracay and yeah, they moved to Shadow. Maybe. <laughs> but a lot of the the best kite boarding is an island called Cuyo in, in the middle of the... It's in the middle of nowhere. It's part of Palawan, but it's in the middle of the Sulusi. But Sulusi is not in the bottom. It's like, you know that, that ocean between Visayas and Palawan? Yes. There's a huge blank space uh. of ocean. There's an island there in the middle called Cuyo, and it's like all the kite boarders say that's like the best really? in the Philippines. Yeah. Wow. And th- right now there are flights that go there, but I took, I went there by, by ferry, like overnight ferry. Because there are ferries that go from Iloilo to Puerto Princesa for like 36 hours. But they stop by that island for like five hours. Uh, but so I went there, but I spent like a few days there before catching the boat to Puerto Princesa. This is one of the like nice like uh, off-beaten track islands that I've been in the Philippines. Cuyo. I wonder how I'm gonna do the show notes for this episode. I'll just list down the places that you mentioned, or somehow like <laughs> the Wikipedia link or something. <laughs> uh, which reminded me, are Diba Murag they opened Boracay recently? Yeah. Did they? You're, I'm just curious. Are you planning to go there just to see? Like I'm yeah, curious. I'm, I'm curious. Like I, I'd like to write maybe about it, like how it's different now. So I'm sure it the, has to be. It has to be. Like I have relatives who, who on and off live there. Yeah. So I have. My, Wait, and you have like a, the resort there thing, right? Ah, that's my relatives. Uh, the Mandala. Station three. Uh, I always get the stations mixed south? up. It's the ones the, near south, nearer right? the mainland. Yeah. Station South. 3. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Station Mandala 3. Spa. 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 Re- Does it have accommodation? It's just yeah, a spa. Yeah, they do. Oh, okay. Yeah, we stay there. It's a, sp- <laughs> it's a spa resort. It's a spa resort, yeah. I assume it's still there. I, is I, it? I'm pretty sure it's still there. Is it still open? Yeah, it should still be open. <laughs> it should still be open. I just haven't right. been back in Boracay for a while, but they, I mean, they should still be open. Like that. So my relative, my cousin, she was there. Like, uh... Right before they opened, and then yeah, they, she yeah. took a picture, and I mean, it still looks beautiful. <laughs> but it, yeah, it's it like, still looks beautiful. But yeah, I, I had my qualms about how they went about the rehabilitation because I think you could have done that by just like closing sections of the island at a time and fixing the island part by part or area by area. I just don't know the idea. Like, why did you have to like close, close the, whole the entire thing? thing? Oh, I'm sure there, yeah. Some anyway. Now, anyway, it it, it happened already, yeah. and now it's reopened. So I hope, but I hear like a lot of the infrastructure is not yet finished. But I definitely want to write about Baraka and see how it's changed. It's a, it's a, it's a good, you know, topic. People that people will be curious about. I'd like to pitch that to a foreign foreign in flight mag, maybe for a foreign airline. Are you? Do you have any any future trips planned? What's happening? Surprisingly, at this point, no. Really? I just like no. I had so much, tri- so many trips, like September, October. I didn't even have time to blog ah. for many of those trips. So right now, November, December, like I just want to rest and like uh, pitch stories to magazines. So this is like my downtime. Yeah, I, I want to rest. I was like September, October. I was like in Seoul, in Macau, in Hong oh, Kong. Wow. I was like two weeks in Japan. I was five days in Indonesia. Yes, yeah, so I was surprised when I sent you the message. I was like, "All right, we're just gonna figure out when he's gonna be in Cebu the next time." Ah, uh, you were just, so surprised. Like I'm free. Like just uh, yeah. You, I was like, oh, you, you're here. you messaged me like like at the perfect timing. Like when I, I you know, like. A few days after I arrived in Cebu and decided that, you know, downtime, like rest. Yeah. 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 But Cebu, uh, strategically as a, as a travel writer, I really like being in Cebu because it's like the center geographically. Yeah, it's easier. Yeah, it's easier. It's like easy to fly to Manila. And then I write a lot about Mindanao because not a lot of writers are familiar with Mindanao. Yeah, like I'm scared to go there. Or people are scared. Well, which is to... which is not which is an unfair thing because yeah. you can't generalize the whole place. Like well, the most dangerous areas are just like pockets of like areas, right? Mobita. Like I went to was it last year? Last year I went to Mindanao in uh Surigao. 
Then Surigao City took a boat there. That's to just like Visayas. That's like part of Visayas. Wait, and then Northern, I moved to. Northern, Northern, I know, Northern. that's like the super. I'm, I basically stayed in the top portion. So you like, haven't been to Davao? Oh, I've, been to da- I've been to Davao. I've been okay. to Davao. Yeah, so you've I been went to, to the south. Yeah. I went to. There's a little town there called Lanusa. Surf. I haven't been there. But yeah. I know that's like the surf town. Yeah, it's. A, I love that town. I've been there twice now. Lanusa. Yeah. yeah, and then I loved. I love that place. I mean, it's. Nothing to do but surf, mm. so which is part of its allure, honestly. Yeah, you know, basically you get to uh, just hang out all day and then surf in the morning and in the afternoon. And then, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I miss, yeah, I, I like that place, but that I was gonna say that's my that's probably my weird, my I was gonna say weirdest, it's not the weirdest, it's not weird, it's uh, you know, <laughs> it's a uh, you're off the beat, off track. the beat, yeah, yeah, place in Mindanao, anyway. Yeah. You should see more of Mindanao. So, should uh, I? Yeah, you should. Where? Some place that doesn't need uh, an escort. An escort. Yeah, like Lake Cebu. There's like, wait, where are you? What are you into? Like inlands or like, are you like a mountain inland person? Or you always like to be in the coast? Because Mindanao is like a lot of the attractions are like. No, it's not just all about the coast. It's all about the inland Oba. mountain. I mean, the tallest peak in the Philippines is in Mindanao. It's Mount Apo. Oh. I, I, like I, I, uh, my, my instinct was to say coast because me and my wife, whenever we travel, we always hit the beach. Ah, uh, you like the beach. Yeah. But since lately, I mentioned earlier, I started cycling. And then... Uh, I think there is cycling communities in Mindanao, I'm like sure. in Davao and stuff. Yeah, and, uh, I'm sure. The roads are nice there too. Yeah, Mobidan, yeah, then and a lot wide. Of, yeah. A lot a lot of cycling is going up mountains. Yeah, like so I think cycling between on that highway between Bukid Non and Davao, that's very scenic and the weather is so cool because it's up a plateau. Have you tried like camping and stuff in Mindanao area or Davao? Camping Yeah, but I was like on I was like trekking in a mountain in Mount Hamigitan, the newest UNESCO World Heritage Site. Mm, no, the reason I ask is uh, one of my. But you can. There are many campsites in Mindanao, like and it's like really in cool, elevated areas. Oh, okay. But, well, I was gonna like say like in Camp Sabros, you know, with like pine trees and stuff. Ah, yeah. It was one. Of, I sometimes I daydream, but this is not gonna happen anytime soon. I just go on like a bike packing trip. You get on a bike and then you have a whole bunch of bags, and then you just go, and then. You know, you keep going maybe 100 kilometers today and then you sleep wherever you are and then another 100 kilometers the next yeah, yeah, yeah. day. I mean, I... Or you can do like... I'm not doing that, by the way. I'm just daydreaming about it. Oh, you're it, not doing it. It's just like an imaginary thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, these island provinces are really cool to cycle. Are, are, you, are you like the like the hills and stuff? No, I'm... Like, Sikihor is... Not, I love Sikihor. I love, yeah, I want to go to Sikihor. Have you been? Uh, Steph's dad, my wife's dad, is from Siki Horror. So you go there. We haven't a lot. been there. What? <laughs> and it's so near. It's like I know you should. It's go. easy to get there from Cebu. I don't know. There's something about Siki Horror that's yeah. He was just there last week. Actually, he keeps going back. We it, haven't gone. You know the be- the beaches, like the sites there, aren't really that whoa, like grand. But there's just like. The overall atmosphere of the place, the charm. There's something about Sikihor. Oh, I just can't put my. I noticed it was in your list. Finger, of, yeah, uh, ten places. Yeah, especially. Oh yeah, and the the encounter with the uh, with the um, shaman. With the shaman. No, what's the Bisaya term? Ba? I don't know. Mamba barang, barang. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my my father-in-law does not like that reputation <laughs> because he's from there, so he feels like. Which I kind of disagree, but he feels like it's but I feel a lot of like, people. And which, in a way, preserve the, the place. You know, you know what I mean. That's why people, but you know, not everybody believes in it. And oh, yeah. for me, that's part of the charm, actually, no, the allure of the place, and that's what gets people curious. I mean, you you don't you can't deny that that's part of the history. And it's and it's funny like the tourism tries to erase that, but I don't I don't think it's a good move. Like it's part of the heritage of, of you can't deny that there are people who practicing that because there are still yeah yeah you can't it. yeah you can't I feel like you shouldn't change a place for what it is if that's what it's known for, you should lean on it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you should 
That should be on posters. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, bye. I know we've been here for a while. I really got for four hours already. Uh, no, sad. <laughs> that, that, that hasn't happened. The longest one was three. Three that was That was a long one. Uh, but, um, but you cut this down, right? And you you no. cut this down. No? No, it just keeps... It's just like this. It's just a converse. When I didn't know it was like on live there, you know? Huh? I, know I it's didn't not know there. it was like on live. <laughs> no, it's not. Like it was like so no. live feed. No, no I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. But the, a lot of the a lot of the podcasts that I listen to are basically. I think that that'd be interesting, like a like a Facebook Live. People, like, some people, I've seen that. Um, I don't want to do it because it's another <laughs> Pandora's box. It's another a box thing of that worms I have to do. You get what I'm saying? What do you mean? It's another thing you have to do. Like we're having this conversation, and then I'm looking at my notes. No, there has to my... be another person giving feedback and stuff. Like, ah, you mean the interaction with the audience? No, um, kinda, you're right. There has to be another person Interact- taking care of it. Like, yeah. you know, making sure it's running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like right now, I'm just doing this by myself. It's enough for me to look at my notes and just make sure that the recording <laughs> device is on. Okay. No. And yeah, because that would suck. Did that, did that happen before? Like, it's like it turns oh, off. I mean, it's just off. Like, I've, it I've wasn't run re- out of battery twice, <laughs> and it's annoying. <laughs> and it comes out, no. And then I don't edit it. Like, I I keep it yeah, in yeah, more yeah. or less. Yeah. No, because a lot of the podcasts that I listen to are really just long form conversations. Okay. There's an intro. Uh, explaining who the guest is and everything, and then. Bam! It's just a yeah. one hour, two hour conversation. Yeah, and then we end it, and then an outro, and yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because if I do the editing and everything, uh, it becomes a lot more work. Mm, no, mm, mm. so why not? With that in mind. Where awesome. can where can people find you online? Ah, people can find me online on my blog, Easy traveler.net that's e-a-z-y with uh one l for the traveler the american spelling of traveler easy traveler.net and on facebook you can find me also easy traveler and on instagram at easy traveler all right good thank to see you thank you bud. yeah nice to see you put all right <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that episode with Edgar Alan Zeta Yap. You know, when I re listened to the episode, when I was doing the edit, I was. It was fun. It was like going back on a trip again. Like, it was like going on a trip. You know, like seeing different places, but through a podcast. I hope you guys had that same experience as you were listening to it. Again, Edgar, if you're listening, Thanks for sharing your experience. It was really good to see you after all these years. Thanks to our sponsor, The Green Nine Coffee. If you want a good coffee, get on over to The Green Nine. The music from this podcast is Piano March by Audionautics. If you, yes, you the listener, if you want to support the show, there are four ways to do so. You can be a Patreon, head on over to patreon.com slash 032. Or you, the second way is you can buy stuff from the online store at assembly.032.com. We have cool 032 shirts, caps, and hoodies. You can also visit our stockists if you want to see it before you buy it. Hopefully by next year, 2019, we'll have a store. That's the goal the third way to support the show is to share this episode on social media. And the fourth way is to write a rating on iTunes. Thank you. You, yes, you, the one who is listening to this through their Bluetooth headphones. Uh, wow, lish. Now, through their headphones or through their speakers, through their car speakers, through your headphones, whatever, through your phone. Thank you for listening. We're going to see you. You'll hear from us next Tuesday on another episode of 032 Conversations. It's almost 2019! Yeah!